I'm going to talk about one of the work streams of the research program Action for Empowerment and Accountability. And the work stream is called Governance at the Margins. And I wanted to share with you some of the very interesting findings and some of the implications these findings have for development policy and research. Uh, the Governance at the Margins work stream asked a key question, how do people from poor and marginalized households living in contexts of fragility, conflict and violence meet their governance needs? Who do they go to to resolve their problems? And we had a really interesting methodology uh, which took a panel of poor and marginalized households and some of the intermediaries and followed them repeatedly with interviews over a period of four years to really assess and get an understanding of how governance is experienced on the ground. I'm going to talk about and share three findings with you. The first one, not surprisingly, multiple and diverse authorities matter for people's decision making and governance needs in these contexts. Uh, these include religious groups, armed groups, uh, informal and traditional authorities. Uh, all of these play a role in decision making. Why is this important? This is important because many uh, development programs overassume the importance of government as the primary authority in people's lives and don't engage with the diversity of actors and institutions that are actually taking real decisions and affect people. And in this process, governance is messy and uh, many of these institutions overlap. And while these authorities are sometimes acknowledged by uh, practitioners on the ground, they are not acknowledged formally and they don't surface in log frames or program documents. And this is a problem. The second finding that we found is uh, that many development programs and policies assume that people can approach and connect with public services uh, and government officials themselves directly. And so many spaces are made for engagement, such as complaint cells, etc. We found it's more common that these contacts with public authorities are mediated by what we call uh, intermediaries, key individuals who broker and mediate the connection with the state or public authorities. Why is this important? This challenges assumptions about how governance and services work in practice. Despite the presence of multiple state and non-state actors, we find that people themselves at the margins don't have a choice in which authority to go to. These choices are made by intermediaries on their behalf. And yet, because of the informal nature of these intermediaries, coupling, coupled with the fact that these are often unusual government uh, governance actors such as armed groups or religious authorities, uh, practitioners ignore them and these are missed out when programming decisions are being made. My third finding is that uh, development pro programs are often designed based on uh, the fact that people will make claims to demand services from uh, public authorities. And yet we found to the contrary that in these contexts of violence, fragility and conflict, many marginalized households have no or low expectations of state. Rather, they prefer to be left alone. Now, uh, this feeds into pressure to resolve problems at the local level or self-provide services by themselves. This has obviously a range of policy implications for development programs that focus on governance, uh, foremost of which is the fact that uh, you need to build trust and develop expectations from citizens before you can deliver services or make spaces for them to engage. What all of this means is that it's really important to understand the implement implementation of development programs on people's lives, to really understand what these uh, governance programs and policies mean and how they land for people and how people experience them. This can only be done by fine-grained research at the grassroots and not by uh, quick dives into different contexts and just pulling out some findings through that. 